In 1904, there was one graduate of Mount St. Joseph Academy. Ida May Hunter had completed an eight-year course in science, literature, music, and art. Also needlework, plain and ornamental, housekeeping, and cooking. Ida May often said that she, quote, knew how to do everything, and she learned it all from St. Joseph's, end of quote. At Ida May's graduation, Reverend John F. McKerney of Stanley, Kentucky, called upon her to take pen in hand and call all the old graduates to Mount St. Joseph. Ida May took father's advice, and in June of 1905, 16 of the 40 graduates converged on the Mount for the first of many alumni meetings. Six Ursuline graduates, six lay graduates, and the four graduates of 1905 attended the meeting. 1905 was a significant year as it was the 25th anniversary since the incorporation of the Academy. This photo shows Ida May Hunter, Hetty Willett Hopkins, Annie Johnson Hardig, and Elaine Lancaster Killamare, the first officers of the alumni. The Academy closed in 1983. There were approximately 100 graduation ceremonies. Every year, every year did not have a graduation, and more than 1,600 plus Academy graduates. Let's go back a few years to the beginning of Mount St. Joseph Academy. At the request of Reverend Paul Valk, pastor of St. Alphonsus Parish, the school formally opened in 1874 with five sisters from Louisville and three students. From 1875 to 1877, the average was nine. By 1880, the enrollment was 25 pupils. In June that year, Father Valk secured the incorporation of the Academy by an act of the Kentucky State Legislature, and Miss Annie Johnson of Calhoun, Kentucky, was the lone graduate. Also that year, a catalog was published advertising Mount St. Joseph Academy, giving important information about the offerings, schedules, courses, names of students, their grades, requirements for admission, fees, and much more. From the first building built in 1874, the Academy grew to house many girls and expanded to include a junior college. The first building housed sleeping quarters for the sisters, all the boarders, dining room, kitchen, classroom, chapel, parlor, etc. What is now called the Madonna Room was first the dining room, with the kitchen and the floor directly below. Food was delivered to the Madonna Room by means of a dumb waiter. The southwest side had a parlor, now part of the Heritage Room, and the southeast side changed with the times. The room was the first office of the principal. By the 1950s, it was the switchboard room. In the floor above the Madonna room was a chapel, classroom, dormitory. The floor above it was more sleeping quarters, lavatory, etc. The academy grew and a south wing was added, which provided a large multi-purpose room on the first floor, sleeping quarters on the second and third the second floor being the sisters' quarters, and the third floor being a dormitory for girls. The bathroom area has been updated more than once, but the sleeping area remains much the same as it was in 1882. Mother Aloysius was always improving education and life at Mount St. Joseph. She was very involved in having an excellent educational school. In 1889, the newly improved typewriter was added to the Academy equipment. The calligraph is still in the museum. The Academy is approximately 10 miles from Owensboro, and transportation for the sisters, pupils, and guests was by the Jersey wagon, drawn by two mules, horses. Mother improved life as expressed in her letter to Father Valk, June 1916. Mr. Joe Muth was to meet Father Valk at the station in Owensboro in our new Dodge car. Mother called it a necessity to save our horses and mules and allow them to stick to farm work. From 1874 to 1878, the sisters and students walked to St. Alphonsus Church for Mass. 
in 1878, the sisters were given the privilege of having the Eucharist in residence, and the room, which was sometimes called the progressive, progressive room, later used as the music office, and now has electronic equipment, became the first chapel. The small chapel was sufficient until 1885. After eight years, enrollment had increased enough that the chapel needed to be larger, and the senior girls' dormitory became the second chapel. It wasn't long until that, too, became too small for Mount St. Joseph. In 1899, there were nine postulants to receive the Ursuline habit, so it was decided that the large community room would be used as the chapel for the ceremony. That chapel would remain there until 1929, when the pre present chapel was built. The senior girls' dormitory slash chapel was then converted to piano practice rooms. The date is not known, but sometime between the first and second addition to the academy building, two exterior buildings were built. The old blamer is seen here on the right side of the picture, and on the left, the meat house, which would become the girls' infirmary and house the 1934 post office. The bakery was also there and became known to many of us as the student shop. The second wing of the north side of the building was a, was a tremendously beneficial addition. Begun in 1904, it provided a basement, a large dining room, and a kitchen area. The first floor was the auditorium with stage. The second floor had a large study hall, two classrooms in the west end of the building, and another classroom on the east side of the study hall. The third floor had two large dormitories, and above that floor, a large attic, which provided lots of room for storage. With this addition, the Madonna Room was freed and became the library slash museum. School work did not cease because of the new additional construction. In 1904, the girls were busy with their regular classes, but also preparing for the Kentucky Educational Exhibit at the World Fair in St. Louis as seen in this photo in the art studio. The next addition to the campus was St. Angela Hall. Built in 1913, it was living quarters for the sisters, the retired sisters and the novitiate sisters, in other miscellaneous rooms. This picture shows the front foyer of St. Angela's. The next picture shows the basement, which served as the laundry for sisters and girls until 1925. Then the building was converted to Mount St. Joseph Junior College and remained the college until 1950 when it was moved to Owensboro and became Brescia College. The academy and junior college continued to grow and in 1921 St. Michael Hall was erected. The four classrooms, two lower level and two ground level, had four more classrooms added in, in the 1940s. A second addition added more classrooms and a gym in the 60s. In the last photo, if you look closely, you can see the additions by the ridges in the roof. In 1934, the Mount St. Joseph Post Office was officially opened. Here's a picture of the door to the Mount St. Joseph Post Office. All of the now living alumni know the present chapel building. Built in 1929, dedicated December, 1929, the chapel building also had two sides which housed the sisters, their infirmary, novitiate, dining room, mortuary, etc. Below the chapel was a large dining room for the students. The dining room of the academy building became a recreation room for the girls. After the academy closed, the room returned to the dining room again for the Mount St. Joseph Center. After 1929, the room used as a chapel in the, 19, in the 1882 wing became the library. No date was on the next picture. The chapel is seen in the rear right of the picture. It is after 1929. The information on the picture says, it is a favorite place west of terraces. Chapel, rear right. The girls are facing west, Cummings Road. It depicts many girls of different ages and their uniforms. In the catalogs, the older girls were instructed to bring drab dresses. 
the girls 13 and younger, were to have two different dresses. The school dress was to be red with white ribbon near the hem of the dress. Their Sunday attire was to be navy blue with a white ribbon near the hem. In the picture, the older girls have drab dresses and the white ribbons are visible. And the girls are wearing plain white sailor hats, part of the dress code. Although there was not construction continuously being added to the campus, there were other additions to the campus. In 1907, the alumni purchased a statue of St. Joseph in honor of Mother Aloysius. Mr. O'Flynn gave the sisters a Carrara statue from Italy of the Sacred Heart pleading. In 1913, when the campus was ready, the two statues were erected. Father Valk also had planted many maple trees in the front campus. Even earlier, Father Valk had planted pines, and this picture was named a favorite place. There were many May ceremonies crowning Our Lady Queen. We have a picture of the 1936 ceremony and another of the 1938 on the North Terrace side of the campus. After the present chapel was completed, there were a number of changes inside the academy building. The sisters had begun having Madonnas reproduced by the Rae brothers. Yearly, the Mother Superior chose the Madonna to be added. Some of the Madonnas can be seen in the background of the 1949 class pictured here. The faculty of the academy included two music instructors. For a number of years, there was an orchestra with students from all grades. Here is a picture of the orchestra from 1954. The next picture is a string ensemble from 1954 with six seniors. Two pictures of the academy student body are depicted at the CSMC rally held at the Mount May 12, 1954. The altar for the Mass in front of Our Lady of Fatima statue was erected by St. Joseph and Paul's students. The Mount St. Joseph girls are seen marching up to the altar. Note, the girls are wearing their beanies. In the 1960s, the larger enrollment meant more sleeping quarters were needed. The brick building that housed the post office, student shop, and girls infirmary was raised for the present building, the Blamer building. Now we had a new larger post office on the ground floor and above it three floors of sleeping quarters for the girls. The following pictures give us a view of some girls in the 1970s and 80s. Some sophomores on the stairs, some girls at the prom, Sister Jane Irvin and Hope, sophomores, a prom girl and her date, and some more sophomores and freshmen. Since the academy closing, the buildings are used as Mount St. Joseph Conference and Retreat Center. The present facade provides a reception area and an elevator for the use of the public. In the 110 years since the beginning of the Alumni Association, there have been many changes at Mount St. Joseph. In the 32 years since the closing of the Academy, the Alumni Association has lost many members, but the Alumni Celebrations are still